Hello, everybody. Today we have a super interesting interview with Naur Geva, who is the founder and CEO of Zik Analytics, one of the leading dropshipping finding product tools. How are you today, Naur? I'm very good. Thank you so much for having me. And I hope I'll be able to deliver some value today to your great community. Amazing. Thank you for uh, being here with us. Um, so uh, my first question to you is, how did you come into the dropshipping niche? How did you start all this? All right, great question. I'll be very happy to share my personal story with you guys. So in 2015, uh, I moved with my wife at the time. We wasn't married, but uh, today she's my wife. We moved to Germany um, and I couldn't speak any German. I would start looking for solutions. How can I make money in different ways after I failed finding a job uh, in Germany? And I just had a visit in Israel. I met a friend. He told me about dropshipping. And I, after thinking about it for a while, checking on YouTube, I decided to go for, for, uh, for the eBay dropshipping to try to make it work out. I didn't have much options, so I was sitting home and just practicing on the computer with my, I had an eBay account, so I just started listing products. At the time it was dropshipping from Amazon to eBay. Actually there was no product research softwares or almost no uh, monitors at the time, maybe one or two. It was really in the beginning. And uh, yeah, this is how I came how I came to, to start with eBay dropshipping and eight months later, I, I achieved my first result. I came to the, to the place, to the moment where I, I generate $5,000 in profit every month. And this is when I realized, actually a bit before, after the first $1,000 profit a month, I started to realize that there is a lot of potential in eBay dropshipping. You know, I, I, I did some businesses before where you need to invest a lot of money in stock or pay rent or pay for a lot of workers and so on. And I had a lot of bad experiences with it. And when I see how easy is eBay dropshipping compared to, you know, opening a offline business, I just decided to put everything I have into it. And, and this is also later on how I came with the idea of Zik. Amazing. And what really, this was my next question, what, what, what really made you to establish Zik? Like how, how did you go from just being a dropshipper to build a huge company like Zik? All right, so um, what happened is once I realized that I, I have a method, I found a method that actually work. I decided, first of all, before even I thought about making Zik, I decided to actually check if what happened if I teach more people working uh, with, with the product research method I developed completely manually without any software. And uh, I, I took a friend, I told him, listen, I saw his struggle. I told him, listen, I'll make you lessons. I'll help you out. Let's see if you get results. And he really very fast after around one month and one week, he started to generate a lot of sales. Basically, I was focusing on finding high demand, low competition products based on the search result on, of eBay. And then I decided to go out with the method. I decided to make the first webinar. If you remember at the time, there was a big Israeli group. It was in the Israeli community, uh, the something automation. So I, I went, I, I went there to make the first webinar. And um, while I was working about the first webinar, uh, I thought, you know what, if there was a software that can process, that can automate or at least uh, semi automate my whole product research method, I do manually. And I start looked for developers and I, by coincidence, find a developer that really liked the idea. And this is how everything started. Nice. It's uh, pretty cool because we started both tools pretty at the same time. Like you started, I think, two or three months before us. Uh, yes, yes. I think it was something like this. It was very, very close to each other. Zig started and you, a few couple of months later, you started, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I remember we know each other or even it, when, when you were using your software just for yourself. Yeah, that's true. Cool. Uh, it's amazing to see that now we finally, after three, even more years, we have this interview for the first time. Yes. Uh, pretty excited. So I wanted to ask you uh, right now, uh, do you recommend people to work with niches or broad stores of many different products? Okay, it's a great question that you bring up because I, I have many people ask these questions, many beginners. So I think it's a great, great to, to answer them this, this question as well. So I personally believe start general store. You know, you don't know what is selling it. The, the one most important tip I can give to any beginner about 
if to go for general store or for or for a uh, niche store is don't assume you know which product will sell you know don't come with your own opinion from home hey i like shoes so i will sell shoes or i really believe uh, essential oil is great product so i will sell essential oils you are, you have to follow the numbers every niche uh, have his demand and competition every product have his demand and competition this is what you focus on i think what you should focus on and also you know ebay it's it's a kind of very um, very individually react you know it's react different individually one sellers can have a success with specific products which other sellers not so i think starting generally is the best way to start and later on see what are the best selling products and try maybe to scale them well and after how much time do you decide that the product doesn't sell well for you and you delete it from your store okay good question the, the, personally what i do i like to give a little bit more time so personally i give around up to 60 days uh, but I also try to keep it uh, like uh, to keep the activity so let's say if kind let's say I have no product that did not sell for 60 days or I just listed some products and they did not sell 30 days and I see you know specifically I haven't deleted products for quite long time so I will find the one which I think the least important with the least views or out of stock or stuff like this and I remove them but I like to give it to give one product more chance like longer chance not only 30 days around 60 days cool amazing um i would go a bit into something that i'm a big believer of it which is the big number so i'm talking a lot about it but i would like also to hear uh, from you when someone works with a big number slow which is uh, uploading a lot of products in bulk uploads together how do you recommend them to improve their conversion rates improve their products what would it do? All right, great question. So I definitely believe that this method works as well. You know, I think that there are many methods. I think all the method, all, almost all the methods out there are, are work. You know, they work, but you need to stick to a method. So this is the problem I believe of, of most of the people, even before the optimization. They kind of, they try this little bit, they try this little bit, they're not sure what they, and then they don't try anything basically. Because they give this a week, this two weeks, and then they have no results. So if you decide for a method, do your homework, the the uh, big number rules it's a definitely method that work there are many people making money out of it if you decide you go for this method so you have to stick to it to give it a couple of months not just few days and i think that also in the big number rule you can actually put attention to details it's in a different way you know so it's not like when you do the product research one by one so you can really like go to to see a price difference from competitors and how many competitors like or, or what shipping policy or, or, the, or, or return policies your competitor have, but you can still focus on demand, competition, and price. You can still do it. So I think you should build an assembly line. There is also a, a video I'm talking about it, mm -hmm. uh, which basically you get a bunch of uh, uh, sellers which lead you to list of their best-selling products. Then you can filter by how many people are selling the same products, uh, how many, what are, the, what, what are the average prices, how much you can sell it compared to your competitor, competitors. Every, all this process can be automated completely. You don't need to do it one by one. You know, you just use softwares. Uh, you can use uh, the bulk scanner, turbo scanner. You can use the auto finder and then optimize the listings later on with Zeek. We'll talk about it probably in the, in the next couple of uh, questions. Uh, but this is the thing. Build an assembly line, you know, put attention to demand and competition, put attention to price, and then put attention to titles. And all of this you need to do without spending too much time. So it's not the same like people work manually. You need to find your quick solutions. Uh, and uh, if, you will, if we will dive into it a little bit deeper, I will also give some tips how people can, can do these things quite fast. Nice. Okay. Uh, I, I really agree with you about the focus. Every method will work if you focus on it. Uh, so this is really the main uh, thing here. Um, but uh, yeah, um, so I, I really wanted to ask you a bit uh, deeper about it. Uh, how do you, for example, titles, it's something which is important for products. How do you optimize titles for bulk uploads? All right, great question. So uh, people think, you know, to optimize title, you need to go and completely change the whole title or put many new keywords in. But actually, if you go to products with high demand, low competition, 
this specific product already have low competition and have winning titles, have winning keywords, right, in the title. So the idea is to compete these products. We are not trying to, to just, you know, pop up completely in a different search. We're trying to compete these specific products which we are picking because we know this product have high demand, low competition, and we can have a better price. So what I always suggest is just, you know, tweak it. One, two keywords, that's it. You can uh, do the changes inside Zeek, inside the folders. You can do the, the changes by uploading products to bulk upload to AutoDS and then do the edits on the draft before you list it to your store. Or you can do it on CSV. All what you need to do is um, or you yourself or specific or, or a VA, virtual assistant that will go and we just tweak one, two keywords in each, each title by the end of the title. And that's it. You do it quite fast actually okay so i mean you don't go very deeply but you do you just put the main keywords in the title yes it's like let's just give an example if someone uh, it's if someone sell for example a gaming keyboard wireless with um uh, with the backlights uh, for pc and mac okay let's say this is the title so i'm not going to change anything in the beginning if there is free space, I'll just add more keywords to the end. So for example, I'll, I can add, a, a, I don't know, games or office, or you know, you can use the title builder in Zig to find these keywords very quick. You just put the, the niche, you just do it, you use the title builder, you get list of keywords in a second. And, and just I'm gonna either add one keywords or I will remove two, three unnecessary keywords. For example, people use weed, or beautiful or stuff like this, which is not searched keywords. And I will just get rid of one or two keywords like this, and I will place one keywords. And the idea is, again, not to try to rank for another title, another keywords, is to just tweak it so eBay see it as a unique title, and maybe also add another keyword which can drive more traffic. That's an amazing tip. Uh, there is a specific place in the title that from your experience you think that it's better to put the keywords there, like in the beginning, in the end. The way the way the the way any search engine I think works, it's you know because it's you know better than me, you're a developer, but but it's read from left to right. So of course the beginning of the title is the most important, but I wouldn't change title that it's already work good. You know, even if this title have their keywords in the middle, the main keyword in the middle or in the end, if this title already generates sales for this specific product and the competition under these keywords, under these searched keywords is low, I wouldn't try to change the the beginning. I will always keep the root of the title the same and i will just add my new keywords in the end of the title amazing and uh, if I, I usually recommend people to uh, also if something sells for them so improve it even more so would you go deeply for for example item specifics picture or something like that definitely definitely today your tool for example uh, he can add the uh, item specific automatically uh, even though I would uh, uh, definitely for good products, I will, you know, I'll try to put more attention to details. But again, I think everyone need to manage his resources correctly, you know. So if you are the only, per if the person who watching us right now is the only person who work in the business and he need to do customer service and he need to list products and he need to find products and he need to, you know, take care of whatever call to eBay, anything else. So you need to, prior I think people need to prioritize. You cannot do everything. And of course, if you are growing, it's different story. Uh, I can tell you already uh, that for my experience, I guess you, you have the same experience, the really big sellers, you know, that, that like really like scaling to a lot of stores, they really have a system in place. They really like having a, a strong assembly lines and they cover all aspects. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, cool. So people really need to understand where they focus their time so they can actually make scale and not only focus on Exactly, exactly, exactly. Great. Um, there is an option to combine uh, Zeek Analytics with uh, AutoDS. And I thought maybe you can uh, even share your screen and uh, show how to do that. Definitely. Let me just uh, share my screen here right now. So I prepared it here because I was guessing you're going to ask me something like this. One second. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen in one second. Do you see my screen? Yeah. So we are on the dashboard of Zeek here. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go through all the things. It's, it will waste too much time, but I want to show you how you can actually list products from Zeek directly to AutoDS. 
So first thing you need to do is to go to the management panel, to the settings, okay? And then uh, here in the settings, you will have integrations, okay? In the integrations, you have the token here. You can, uh, you choose AutoDS, you add a token, you give your store name, and basically um, the, the token will be added here, okay? Once you see token is added, everything is in place. Of course, you have to choose your supplier. So if you're working with Amazon or Walmart or anyone else uh, that uh, we support in Zeek, and then uh, you start your product research. You can use different tools. You can use Turbo Scanner. You can use uh, Bulk Scanner. You can do the work manually, just competitor research or product research. Anyway, in all the tools beside the Turbo Scanner, you can save products to your folders. So you build your own product list, as you can see here. And once you came here, you want to list the product. You come here, you select the store you want to list the product to. You select the marketplace and you click on the upload selected. Of course, you need to, to select all the all the products you want to select or you can select the whole folder check all or, the, or, or check a specific page click the upload selected and it will automatically upload it upload it to AutoDS to the draft right yeah yeah, um, yeah so this is how simple it is cool it's really easy and then what you do you you split by sellers by categories what, what are okay the folders? Good question. So you can be do your folders as you want. You know, there are people, they have different VAs. They have folder for each VA. There are people like to, to, to split the product by prices so they can control which, you know, they build. One of the things I believe I also show, I think you will think like me. It's very important to keep the, the, the portfolio of the store with an average selling price, price, which is aiming to be the higher. Of course, not like $3,000 per sale, but, but to keep it to $35, $50 or even more uh, uh, in order to get uh, uh, more value for your order, for the orders you process. So, so you can really build like folders with different pricing and then you can control the pricing, how much you list between 50 to 100, how much you list between $5 to $20 and you can build it the way you want it to be, for example. Uh, yeah, it can be used in any way. People want to, to, to do it. Cool. Okay, great. Um, so I uh, have some more questions that I prepared. Um, if you don't have something more, let, let's turn off the screen show. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, good. And now I can see you. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I wanted to ask you, what is a winning product for you? What, what in a perfect world, what would you define as a perfect product? All right, well, great question. And I, you know, I, I really like this question because people are like, always find it very complicated. You know, they, oh, what is winning product? How do I know if it's a winning product? But actually it's very, you know, it's a very, very uh, simple, uh, uh, I would say uh, a checklist you need to go through. Okay, so that's all. You need to understand who is your competitor, who is the product, who's selling the product. So let's say you find a product uh, that um, uh, have certain amount of sales, you'll also, Number one, start from demand. So you want to have, let's say, uh, five sales in the last 30 days. Okay. On now, eBay? Yeah, on eBay. Now, I would always say the more beginner you are, the more strict you should be with the criteria. So if you're just getting started, you can anyway list only 100 products. So go for products with 20 sales in the last 30 days. Why to go for five? You're anyway limited, you know what I mean? So, so the, the, beginner, the more beginner you are, the more strict you should be with the criteria. But let's say the average when your store is already running is five sales for 30 days. And then I also prefer to have uh, products with, with no more than 15 competitors based on the title. Okay. So you can either, again, same thing. If you're a beginner, go for product with five competitors, three competitors. You know, you have this, you have enough, you don't, you're anyway limited. But if you already want to scale fast, so I would say 15 competitors. So this is the first criteria. And then, you need to see price. You can be more competitive with the price. You can be more competitive uh, with uh, your seller level. Some things you can see, something you can see. So what you can see, you can check, but feedbacks you can see. Um, uh, what else you can see? You can see uh, uh, policies, shipping, uh, handling time, return policies. So I usually recommend people always work with 60 day return policy, always uh, try to have as fast as possible handling time, you know? If you need to create few shipping policies, create few shipping policies, but try to, to be uh, better than your competitor in any aspect. Price, demand, 
competition, title, item specific, description, anything else. Now, we talked about it before, right? They need to see also, they cannot go to all the details if they list now thousands of products. So you have to see what you can do when you, when you go for the big number rules and then apply it, which is demand, competition, price, do your best with your policies and um, optimize the title and maybe later on the item specific as well. Interesting. Cool, thank you for the insights. Um, let's talk about a bit about, about uh, something different. Um, we started to scale, now our business starting to run. So first, uh, when do you recommend to bring a virtual assistant for product finding? All right, it's a very good question because I think it's really depend on few aspects. First of all, it depends on your budget. Okay, like any business, you know, like if, if, you, if you open another business, you don't have the money to bring workers, you don't bring workers, right? If you have the money, you bring, but you don't just bring to say, I have a worker. There is another reason. Second, second thing is time. If you have the budget, but you don't have enough time and you really believe you can start directly uh, uh, with the help of VA and you are disciplined enough to learn and to track your VA, it's an option. I wouldn't say it's my favorite option. I would prefer you start from scratch, learning the business yourself, already build, let's say, the first $1,000 profit um, a month, and then you bring a VA. You know, this is the, the, the I would say, the, the one which makes the most sense. But I also saw people that just come from scratch. They have another business experience, you know. They believe dropshipping is great. They start from VAs from day one, and it works for them. So it's not black and white, but I still think the best, the best, the most healthy way is to first learn the business yourself, make some profit, and then use this profit to bring VA to scale. Cool. Uh, and what would be the daily schedule for the VA? Like if, if for example, I have a VA for t full time to list products for me, how would you split it? Like first go find products, then optimize or list, then optimize. What would be the... All right, great question. So how do we see the assembly line? So the assembly line basically is starting from finding competitors for finding their filtering demand, their best selling products, filtering competition, clean out all the high competition products. Then you left with the, with the cream de la cream, I would say, with a product which like have high demand, low competition. Then you can filter out product which are not fit with the prices. You can filter out Vera product. And then you come to the last part, which is title optimization, which can either be done if you do it with Zik on the folder, or it can be also done, let's say you, you use the CSV file to upload to, to um, AutoDS, or you use the Auto, the, the, the Auto Finder, for example. Then it can also be done on the draft. So before you list it, you go to one by one, do your small tweaks, and list and you can also let's say you can also skip this part of title optimization you know it's not mandatory i don't say your business will not work without it but this is how i would see like the complete assembly line that you can put the that you will be able to really like grow with quality you just need to see you can fulfill this need you know if you have enough power to do it amazing so we already build like a step by step very clear process for the virtual assistant and then you can yes definitely follow. and and I would also test them for each station, for each step. I, I wouldn't just tell them, okay, listen, you new VA, you do everything now. Start doing everything. I would tell them, okay, you start with finding competitors and listing on the high demand products, and I will do the rest. I'll make sure he knows this best. Then I will start to delegate more and more till he's ready. One of the biggest mistakes also I had, I guess I think every, every entrepreneur have this mistake in the beginning, is that you bring a VA or a worker, and you go and you give, you throw him the job, you know, like, yeah, do everything. This is what you need to do. And you're already sure in your mind, you know how to do it. You're sure he knows also how to do it. And you come one day later and you say like, damn, he, what, he, what happened here, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. It should be like step by step uh, as in any real business in the world. Yeah. Um, you cannot bring someone who knows everything immediately. Um, cool. Okay. Um, so anything else that you would like to add about the virtual assistant? Well, I think another part which is important is also the before you hire in a virtual assistant, you really had to test good the virtual assistants. You really have to make sure if they're from, from Asia, make sure they have a good internet, make sure they're coming from a stable house because you know how it is. They can suddenly disappear. Someone died, someone make accidents. Suddenly there is storm, there is no internet. 
you try to avoid this in the beginning, then it's already a big advantage if you find someone with good internet, I think. <laughs> Great tip. It's a major <laughs> tip. I think, yeah. I think that no, no, nobody without experience ever think about it. Like, let's check their internet connection. <laughs> yes, people think like, yeah, they what? We're living here in Texas, United States. We have a great internet. They're, they're in Manila. Probably they also have a great internet. No, they have yeah. a very not good internet. I agree. Yeah, that, that's a huge problem, but it's amazing tip. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, some uh, last questions about uh, first about the future of the drop shipping. How do you think it will go from here from 2020 and beyond? What what do you, what do you say about it? So I like to look first of all wide on e-commerce generally. We are we are currently you know let's look before the corona. Before the corona, it was it like only. 15% of retail sales are online, 15% from the whole sales in the United States, which is nothing. Now with the Corona and all this shit, um, what happened that it's probably increased to around 25%, 20-30%. But even though if it's on 30%, we still have another 30 to 40% to go. So imagine what happens if 30% of more people coming and start ordering things online. And now, you know, eBay is eBay, so some slice will come to eBay. And if we're dropshipping on eBay, we will enjoy it. So I think in general, e-commerce is not even close to its full potential. Uh, dropshipping, I th it's an evergreen business. It will always, I think it's, if you take dropshipping and you look like what it actually is, it's one of the oldest ancient businesses, business models, you know. It's people like, you know, like, like a real estate agents, dropshipping is basically the same thing. People are selling information from one place to another. It's one of the oldest uh, ancient business models. So I think there is a great future and uh, there will be also a lot of obstacles on the way and it's not going to be easy all the time, but the one that stay, and we can see it now, you know, after what was in 2018, 2000, yeah, 2018, we see now people are making a lot of money and many people left because of few challenges, you know? Yeah, and uh, by the way, I want to add here a bit. Uh, I also wrote it in my personal Facebook account and in our Facebook community group um, about what happened with the um, e-commerce during the coronavirus. It was crazy. Like Explosive. everyone just yeah, I'm sure that you saw that also in the Zig statistics. Crazy, uh, crazy, crazy. It was insane. Every keyword you search, every niche you check, it's like like this. Yeah, yeah, you can always check it. I, I think you, you, you also show graphs in Zik. You can see something like that. Yes, of course. So there, are, uh, I guess that if you put like some niches, you can see the graph. Crazy. It's insane! It's insane! It's insane! And you know what? More, more, more nice about it. It pushed a lot of people who never bought things online. It pushed them to start ordering things online. Now, everyone know when you start ordering things online. You don't stop all the things online. It's like, you know, it's just become more and more and more. So just people need to think about this, this huge potential that is hiding there, you know, for the long run. Yeah, I, I, I was, I personally was very scared about what will happen after the coronavirus because I thought that, okay, now it's finished and now everything will go back. And then I saw that, no, because if someone got used to buy online, he will keep buying online. That's all. Yeah. Uh, and then even more than that, they will also tell to their friends and more and more people. It's amazing. Um, from your experience, um, I would like to get from you uh, some advice for beginners and something for advanced dropshippers. So I would like first to ask you about any tip that you would like to give for the uh, finishing of this uh, yes. great interview for beginners. Sure. So let's start with beginners. So if you guys are just getting started, the most important thing is to find someone to follow. So you need to have a mentor, you know, it doesn't need to be one-on-one, -on -one, but you need to have a method, okay, that you decide to go and you need to give it a chance. You need to say, okay, I'm 100% now go, for example, for the high number method, or I'm 100% go for another method and I stick to it. And you have to give it, let's say, at least at least three months, you know, to see what's going on, you know, to learn, to, to focus, no doubt, not change your mind. Give it a real chance. This is the tip number one, which most of people failing with this, with this tip. Tip number two is try to manage your expectations correctly. You know, don't come super excited. Yeah, I'm going to make drops. I'm going to make thousands of dollars. And then after one month that you made five sales, you like 
it's not for me and you leave. No, understand, it takes time. Everything in the internet takes time. The first hardest part is the first three months, then the, the, the next six months. So let all this first year of journey be a year which you learn, which you, which you take information for you, which you learn how to run the business, which you learn how to make profit. If anything's happened faster than this, perfect. But don't, you know, don't come and, and say, oh, after one month, like, ah, I expected to make $10,000 a month. Ciao, it's not from you. No. So this, I think, the main focus for beginners. For advanced people, it's scale horizontally, more eBay accounts. In the moment that you have control on your first eBay account, create more eBay accounts. Uh, uh, diverse, but don't diverse too much. You know, many people think like, yeah, I need to work with six, seven suppliers. I need to have six, seven different business models. No, if you already managed to build one business model which work good with a supplier, which, which you're profitable with, scale it for at least three, four more stores, then you can try something else. You know, first of all, make the most out of what you have. Take your 80% of time and invest to the 20% of time, which bring you the 80% of result and not opposite, which most of people are, are doing. And yeah, this is, I think, the, 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 the main tips for beginners and advanced. It's amazing that you said this uh, for the advanced because I'm, I found myself lately talking about it a lot. And thank you for sharing these tips with us. And uh, in general, thank you for uh, this amazing interview now. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I appreciate. I'm very happy to see how uh, your community, the Autodesk community is growing. Very glad to see the people, how they're working hard and to see you guys putting a lot of effort. So let's just continue and, and bring the message to the world that, you know, we can live online life, make money from whatever we are in the world. And it's actually possible, you know. This is the new this is the new generation of living if you ask me this is how people should aim to live amazing we are in the greatest area <laughs> yes start. we are lucky we have to be thankful that we are in this we are able to be in this world right now amazing thank you again and uh, i wish everyone good luck take what now said take everything that you learn and start to implement it immediately don't just learn learn implement right now We love everyone and wish you tons of success. Bye. Ciao, thank you guys. Bye.